Hello everyone, my name is Demis Mu and this is my assistant the foot. Today we'll talk about the Cynics. The Cynics were a strange bunch who appeared after the time of Socrates. The ancient philosophy of cynicism has little to do with the term cynicism that we use today. We use the word cynicism to describe a negative outlook on the world, one that sees selfishness or hidden interests and not lofty values as true motives for action. Now, ancient cynicism did reject conventional values. In fact, the cynics did criticize popular opinions of the time, as well as their contemporaries, for their selfishness and hypocrisy. But they did not stop there. They were not pessimistic and negative in their outlook, as the modern term of cynicism would suggest. Instead, they aspired to divert people from conventional norms, which they saw as constraining and towards an ethics of living in accordance with nature. This life in accordance with nature was for them the only virtuous one and was based on the rejection of what society would see as valuable and right. The first cynic, Antisthenes, who was a pupil of Socrates, taught that all happiness comes from virtue, which we attain if we follow nature. Virtue encompasses self-sufficiency or independence from social possessions and aims. What society sees as worthwhile, good reputation, wealth, high position, was for Antisthenes an enemy of virtue, because if you had good reputation, great wealth or high position, you became dependent on these things. This dependency in turn leads you to always have to play a part, to act in a certain prescribed way so as not to lose what you have. This is why Diogenes, the most famous of all cynics, valued two things above all else, self-sufficiency or autarkeia and freedom of speech or paresia. Self-sufficiency signifies life which is not led by a dependency on passions, especially the desire for wealth and reputation, whereas paresia signifies honest and frank speech. There is a story which describes best what Diogenes was like. The story goes that Plato saw Diogenes washing lettuce. He approached him telling him, if you paid court to the king as I did, you would now wash lettuce. Diogenes responded, if you had washed lettuce, you would now have to pay court to a king. What Diogenes is saying, all I need is lettuce, I am not dependent on the same things as you are, so I do not have to suck up to kings to speak dishonestly, to say things that please them, to be motivated by wealth and reputation in order to live freely. In fact, freedom means precisely the opposite, staying away from these things and not being constrained in either my self-sufficiency or my ability to just say what I want. Another story tells of Alexander the Great. He went to see Diogenes, telling him, is there any favor you would want from me? Diogenes replied, yes, move away from the sunlight. All Diogenes needed from the most powerful man in Greece was for him to move away from the sun. Diogenes was strange even by cynic standards. He took cynicism to its extremes. He achieved his fame because of the odd things he did. He allegedly lived in a barrel. He ate only raw meat. He did not wash. He masturbated in public and was as a consequence known as the dog. The word cynic or kinikos in Greek means dog-like, which is one theory how the name came to be. He showed a complete disregard for social norms or traditions, embracing shamelessness, direct honest speech as well as his self-sufficiency. And Diogenes also embraced his name of the dog, because he believed that humans tend to be hypocritical and artificial. A dog is what it is, it does not carry a mask in order to gain reputation, wealth or social position. And a dog does not express itself differently than it feels, nor does it proclaim one thing while doing exactly the opposite. It was told that Diogenes carried a lamp in the middle of the street during the day and when asked what are you doing, he replied, looking for an honest human. Finally, all this disregard for norms and values had political consequences as well. Diogenes is one of the first self-proclaimed cosmopolitans. He called himself a citizen of the world. He claimed allegiance to no king, city or state, only the cosmos or the universe. It is understandable that someone who feels no attachment to norms or traditions would not be very attached to any particular state. Thus, he was a citizen of the world. Besides cosmopolitanism, others saw in cynicism the precursor to anarchism, the rejection of state authority and laws. Others recognized in cynicism signs of later Christianity, especially in the ascetic renunciation of earthly possessions and attachments. In any case, the cynics questioned their social order from the standpoint of their understanding of nature. 
doing this in a more radical way than any philosophers of the time. Thank you very much and until next time.